I'm standing on a giant lagoon of manure. How far is it safe to walk on this? I've seen a cow walk on this. It's perfectly safe. In California, these lagoons are trapping methane from cow manure to turn into fuel. This is a huge effort by the state to reduce methane by 40%. It's not just manure. Refineries across the state are retrofitting their operations so they can make fuel that burns cleaner from used cooking oil and animal fat. This is a container of jet fuel that's been made from 100% animal fat. We could take a uh, cooking oil from the local McDonald's fryer uh, and turn it into to diesel fuel. This is our diesel diesel and the petroleum diesel, and you will see the difference in the smoke. All of these changes are happening in large part thanks to California's Low Carbon Fuel Standard, a program that incentivizes companies to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Its goal is to reduce the climate impact of transportation fuels 20% by the year 2030, while we work to fully transition to electric vehicles. They're putting a price on carbon, and that's essential to be able to help prevent the catastrophe of climate change that is right in front of us. But this new frontier of transportation biofuels is filled with uncertainty. I think the line between, uh, between helping uh, the environment and the climate here and just giving welfare to, to these industries is, is, is a pretty gray one. We can't have factory farming and live sustainably with the climate crisis. And the demand for biofuel from cooking oil and animal fats threatens to increase food costs. I'm Evan Halper, a reporter with the Los Angeles Times, and I'm looking at California's complicated biofuel industry. California has more than 5 million cows, and they are a major climate problem. They produce methane, a potent greenhouse gas. But as California scrambles to reach its climate goals, that methane has become a valuable commodity. Each cow produces about 100 to 125 diesel gallon equivalents of methane a year. One cow could get you across country. We visited a dairy farm outside Bakersfield that has a system for capturing methane that is emitted from the manure lagoons you see in industrialized operations like this one. The manure several times a day is flushed from those barns and the liquid portion comes into the digester where it's now we're able to collect the methane that would otherwise be produced that was previously going into the air, what we called fugitive methane. The methane is then processed and diverted into natural gas pipelines to be used as a cleaner fuel. The state has enabled farmers and their business partners to make millions converting the methane. What dairy digesters do is they cover the manure lagoons to trap the methane emissions coming off of the manure. That doesn't resolve the enteric emissions that are coming from cows when they burp, right? So those methane emissions are still happening. What we're seeing is that with the LCFS credits going to fund uh, dairy digesters in this biomethane market, it's actually incentivizing the production of manure. That incentive appears to be there. A cow might make $5,000 worth of milk a year, and it makes about $3,000 worth of manure, according to these programs. And so if you look at the economics of that, you'd say, maybe I should uh, get some more cows and, and generate some more manure. Dairies work on milk economics, not gas economics. And so really important to keep that in mind. You can't simply add cows uh, to make more gas. The state argues that it's difficult to determine whether or to what extent the program is encouraging the expansion of dairy farms. What they say at this farm is that this operation was going to be here regardless. It was here, you know, they built it before they even knew methane was this major greenhouse gas problem and, and knew as much about the environmental problems that we do today. And they're saying, look, we built this lagoon. We've covered up a lot of the methane. It doesn't smell as bad here as it would otherwise. You know, we're trapping this gas and, you know, if we weren't doing this, all of this methane would be escaping into the air and would be, you know, worse for the local community. But activists say the state could have just required they trap the methane, rather than paying them to do it. Methane isn't the only biofuel California is aggressively pushing. The state is moving some of the country's refineries to retrofit their crude oil operations to produce renewable fuel. I was invited to check out one of these operations. I took a tour of the World Energy Plant in Paramount, California. The facility was one of the world's first to make jet fuel without using a drop of crude oil. This is our uh, renewable fuels unit. We process this tallow to make uh, the fuels of diesel and jet. 
And it's not mixed with any petroleum, any fossil fuels. No petroleum. The fuel you're making is completely made out of this tallow, which 100 for a layperson is animal fat. Yes. Tallow gets high scores for climate friendliness. They demoed for us that jet fuel made from tallow is clearer, less odorous, and cleaner burning than the conventional stuff. Do well, you know, we're here really as a as an entity to help the entire transportation industry transition to lower emissions and ultimately to zero emissions. But there won't be enough tallow to supply all the refineries switching to renewable fuels in the coming years. Ultimately, refineries may be relying on something more easily available, but far less climate friendly, soybean oil. The question is whether there will be enough of even that to go around. 400 miles north in the Bay Area sits another refinery that dwarfs the Paramount operation. The Phillips 66 San Francisco refinery in Rodeo has processed crude oil for more than a century, but it's now undergoing a transformation to become one of the world's largest renewable fuel facilities. We'll be taking fats, oils, and greases and turning it into a lower carbon intensive transportation fuel. What kinds of fats, oils, and greases? So we'll, we'll be able to run used cooking oil, tallows, so different animal fats. Uh, we could take vegetable oils, so soybean oil, canola oil, uh, byproducts of ethanol production, so a distiller's corn oil. The refinery is so big that the company had to shuttle us around by van to see it. They say the fuel from Rodeo Renewed will reduce greenhouse gases at the equivalent of taking 1.4 million cars off the road each year. So th this enables us to, to be a part of California's energy future. The target market for the fuel is big trucks and heavy-duty agriculture equipment, the kind of vehicles that will not be going electric anytime soon. And the fuel the operation will make can be swapped in for traditional diesel, without the need for any engine conversions or worries about warranties being voided. So here are three tanks that are currently used for petroleum production, uh, and we're working through the process. This will become the site of the pretreatment unit. It sounds impressive. But many climate activists are skeptical that these conversions will generate environmental benefits on the scale fuel companies and the state project. One of their biggest worries? All that soybean oil, no longer available to food manufacturers, will be replaced in part by palm oil from Asia, the production of which has long been linked to environmental degradation. California's model has become so popular among climate regulators that it's being copied across the country, with Oregon and Washington already creating replicas. Colorado, New Mexico, New York, and Utah are looking into doing the same. But other states don't have to launch their own programs for their farmers and refiners to take advantage of California's incentives. That's what's happening in the Midwest, where industrial hog operations are already converting pig manure into a cash cow. Once again, you know, a, a policy that's being pushed by corporate agribusiness um, to, to try to clean up the, the, the problem they created um, through methane digesters and anaerobic digesters um, is, is just that, a false solution. Um, and it's, at, it's on, the, on the back of taxpayers, it's on the back of family farmers, it's on the back of our communities, our water, our air. At the end of the day, we know that large industry is exacerbating the climate crisis. State dollars that are supposed to be addressing and mitigating the climate crisis could actually be funding to exacerbate it instead of being used in disadvantaged communities to deal with the impacts that folks are experiencing from industry polluting their neighborhoods. California's low carbon and fuel standard program is trying to strike a balance between its own climate targets while avoiding actions that propel global warming elsewhere. How well it's succeeding, though, is in dispute. Hey there, thanks for watching this episode of the United States of California. You can learn more by reading the full story at latimes.com and follow our series on the impact of California's agenda on the rest of the country.